Hello everyone and welcome back to Sandbox EDB in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.5. Today the EDB will test the new Aquarius SSTO which stands as a potential replacement for the EDB shuttle. While its cargo capacity is currently only estimated to be 20 tons, short of the 30 ton estimate for the shuttle, it would be able to handle most of the payloads the shuttle has launched so far and to do so while being fully recoverable. Since this is a risky test, only two Kerbals will launch aboard the Aquarius, Commander Rosti Kerman, who is also commander of ETS-6, and Engineer Bilfin, who will be making his first trip to space. This mission is designated Aquarius-1. We are now waiting for its eight rapier engines to spool up here. Uh, many different engine configurations were considered for the Aquarius, but uh, this seemed to be the best option given the performance, and here we go. Engines ignited, Rosti Kerman getting the Aquarius underway. It's got to be a fairly long takeoff run, though the stall speed for the Aquarius is reasonably low. It has the huge wing to work with here, and so it should be able to lift fairly smoothly off of the runway. Go picking up speed. It is a heavy vehicle, though. Now you'll immediately note the lack of any substantial vertical stabilizer and that was a design choice to make the make the craft sleek if you will however it does mean that as we see the rotation here that the craft does require the use of burners to stabilize itself on descent it does not have much yaw authority and again that's by design and we'll see whether that holds up or whether that is uh, unmanageable for Rossi Kerman as the, the Aquarius is now off the runway and landing gear is retracting. See velocity around 100 meters per second or so. Not particularly fast, but it is climbing steadily. It is carrying its full planned cargo, by the way. It, it's actually carrying a orange tank that is half full, so the structure of the orange tank is 4 tons. Uh, being half full of fuel means it's carrying 16 tons inside of it, so the full complement of 20 tons is being tested here, and that tank is locked currently. So when you take a look at the liquid fuel resources on board, uh, you have to subtract out uh, 1,440 units that are in that tank. So here we go, again, not accelerating very quickly at this stage. It will really pick up speed once it uh, attempts to break mock. There you see a very good view of the belly of it. Very smooth and it is designed to be able to handle splashdown landings at, uh, at its stall speed or close to its stall speed. So, And that, that is considered a safe possibility in the case that it overshoots the runway. And because of its lack of yaw control, if it does overshoot the KSC, Splashing down may be preferable to trying to have it turn around and land. We will have to see. The Aquarius is now past the sound barrier and is rapidly picking up velocity here. Well, at least rapidly compared to what it was doing before. Here you see uh, over 500 meters per second. It may be carrying a surplus of oxidizer at this point, uh, and in that case, the EDV will have to rebalance the liquid fuel oxidizer mix. Uh, you could see at launch that uh, another tank was completely full. Okay, approaching 1,000 meters per second here as uh, serious flame effects are afoot and the rapiers are going at their maximum expected thrust. 1,100 meters per second. Now breaking 1,200 meters per second at 19 kilometers altitude. Approaching 1250 meters per second surface velocity, just above 20 kilometers altitude. And now switching to, to closed cycle mode on the rapiers at 22.5 kilometers. So now using the oxidizer, and there you see that the fuel displayed is stage only, and so not including the payload tank. And quite a lot of oxidizer there. At 35 kilometers, the vehicle is approaching the eastern peninsula, above 1600 meters per second, overheating on the air brakes. Now orbital velocity is over 2000 meters per second, altitude 40 kilometers, 
apoapsis increasing to target apoapsis of just above 100 kilometers. And there we have it, engine shutdown and burn at apoapsis to circularize. Plenty of fuel to spare it seems and it does look like the oxidizer is excessive so on future flights the EDB will have to reduce the amount of oxidizer and increase the amount of liquid fuel. Here we have payload deployment and again it's uh, just a 20 ton tank. The tank is half full of fuel and the shuttle will have to use its Werner ports to move itself away from the payload and there we have that. It looks like the RCS system is well balanced on the shuttle at least for that maneuver. And now that that is basically the the mission getting it to orbit and now it is coming back. That is the trick. And so we see that periapsis over the eastern peninsula is set at 27.4 kilometers. And standard attitude for descent 40 degrees pitch and the RCS system, the Verners, attempting to maintain that with air brakes open. Here we have the shuttle at 65 kilometers, still going fairly quickly. And a, quite, a, quite a fair amount of liquid fuel to spare should it want to use its rapiers in order to do any sort of maneuver to make the runway. Here we begin to see when Rossi Kerman tries to make a pitch adjustment that there is a certain loss of control and you can see the shuttle having trouble maintaining the 40 degree pitch that was initially set and uh, Rossi tests some maneuverability uh, doing pseudo S turns if you will not really just uh, wiggling it around to see how handling is at this point and Without the Werners active, it would be very bad, but so far it seems recoverable with the Werners on. Rosti and Bilfin both look confident at the performance of the Aquarius at this point. At 35 kilometers, the vehicle has already decelerated quite a bit. At no point was there any overheating warnings, even on the air brakes. The air brakes were well shielded at this point, uh, unlike on Ascent, where they definitely had overheating warnings. You can see the Verners working to keep the pitch and they're not doing a particularly good job just above 20 degrees now and uh, here Rossi is testing what happens when the Verners are not active and there is substantial lack of control as you might expect. Uh, however below 30 kilometers it looks like the craft is undershooting not overshooting. A uh, fair rarity actually and so now it's a little bit too slow to make it to the KSC so it will have to run its rapiers in air breathing mode once it gets to a proper altitude. Right now it's a little bit too high still to run it in air breathing mode. Okay here at uh, 24 kilometers the rapiers are ignited. With the mountains looming in front of the Aquarius both Rosti and Bilfin seem to be a little bit concerned. Oh, so Rosti uh, was not feeling all that great about the maneuverability of the craft. Uh, continuing to test it somewhat, but just in general, it's not the most stable thing. Now, the large wing surface does allow it to slow down quite a lot, and of course it's very helpful for splashdowns to have such a large wing surface for buoyancy sake. The main reason for the large wing is to reduce the stall speed to a point where splashing down will leave the vehicle intact so it, it will not be slamming into the surface at a very very harsh speed. Still a lot of concern and uh, control is spotty at best but plenty of fuel to work with in terms of getting this back to the runway. So there's the question is this a good replacement for the shuttle if this is how it acts? It's an interesting point. It could be that the EDB will follow up by putting proper vertical stabilizers on the craft. However, this was also an uh, important test of this particular uh, stabilization configuration, which is also used on the Orion 1 space plane. The space liner, if you recall, also has limited vertical stabilization. And that's an interesting look at the at the Aquarius SSTO on approach. 
But yes, uh, based on the experience with this, we can now assess whether the Orion 1 Space Liner, which is a much heavier vehicle with very little wing surface, uh, would be able to make it back safely. And the preliminary conclusion there would have to be probably not. Probably it will be very risky to bring the Orion down. Not so much for heating. Heating seems to be fairly mild on on the return for a space plane. But the Orion certainly wouldn't be able to make a splashdown landing and without without the ability to turn around safely, uh, its ability to well, it would have to undershoot the runway and try to catch up and have the fuel to do so. Anyway, we see here the Aquarius now below 800 meters with relation to the runway altitude. Slowing down with air brakes out, now below 600 meters. Lining up properly with the runway is largely up to the Verners now. Below 95 meters per second and we are now 100 meters above runway altitude. Fifty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. And touchdown. Touchdown of Aquarius 1 on a successful mission. Drag chutes are out. Still fuel remaining still a healthy margin and it is it this nose gear seems to be a little bit high it's settling down now okay and rolling to a stop here okay coming to the mission's conclusion and Rosty and Bilfin look calm but serious as as the Aquarius seems to be tilting up there appears to be some imbalance that can't be corrected by by reaction wheels alone reaction wheel torque and so a redistribution of fuel to the front and again an attempt to push the nose down and that's successful without the use of burners. Of course, the burners could have been used to push the nose down as well. That's a curious phenomenon, and uh, the EDB will have to work on that. Certainly, we do not expect craft to suddenly nose up after wheel stop. But in any case, the successful return of Aquarius 1 from its mission, Rusty and Bilfin, having their flight up and back down, and we will have to see whether this is a viable system to replace the shuttle or whether some other system will be employed or a combination of systems. Whether this system might require some changes, for instance, to its vertical stabilization. Well, we'll hope you'll tune in for those missions as well. For now, I'll say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And we'll see you next time.